Hello all. <laughs> Welcome back to our Inter Society <laughs> weekly <laughs> webinar series, 35th program. This COVID has caught us all unwest and we have all faced many challenges. No doubt it has been said to all that women are facing more challenges with family, taking care of family and children and all that. So today we have an esteemed speaker who will speak to us on changing role of working women in the post-COVID era. So first, warm welcome to everyone. And before we get to the programming, let me just inform a few ground rules. Request all participants to make sure that your microphone or always remain muted. Request all participants except for speakers to turn off their videos so as to conserve the bandwidth. Actually, we usually we say the questions can be typed in the chat window in it and uh, in time during the program and uh, in the, at the end of the session we'll have it read out through the moderator, but I believe uh, ma'am is ready to take the uh, discussions after the, so we will announce after the program, after the ma'am session, we will request you all to have raise your hands and then we'll try to take each one uh, and then you can unmute each one uh, and then get the questions raised at the end of the session. So now let me move to the welcoming our speaker and all other, all participants. So first, a warm welcome to you, ma'am, from the uh, Inter Societies to uh, Professor S.V.N. Lalka, ma'am, for gracing the occasion. And we are all eagerly waiting to hear, yes, on the changing role of working women in this post-COVID era. Warm welcome, ma'am, and thank you so much for agreeing, consenting to uh, give us the talk and welcome to all the society, uh, all the inter-chapter leaders uh, and a uh, special mention to Harindra Lal sir, who has been uh, very diligently hosting uh, different sessions every week, every Wednesday in all different topics, despite this uh, challenging situation from April onwards, we have been having online sessions so uh, thanks special thanks to Harindra Lal sir and of course to all our leaders who have been supporting us with varied um, topics and from eminent speakers and uh, I I will not be doing justice without welcoming our participants because yes you are uh, you are the ones who are helping us to continue this uh, programs with vigor with because of your dedicated participation and uh, interactive sessions. Thank you, participants. Now we move on to, uh, I request Anita Nair of CSI to introduce our speaker of the day. Ma'am. Anita, ma'am, I believe you are on uh, mute. Can you please unmute yourself? Yeah, now Thank I am you. able to. Yes, I got myself unmuted. Um, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, in today's Inter Society weekly webinar, we have a very distinguished speaker presenting before us a topic of high significance, changing role role of working women in the post-COVID era. So let me introduce you to Dr. SVNL Lalita, who is currently working as a chairperson of Executive Council of IEEE Guntur subsection of the Hyderabad section. Dr. Lalita is a life member of IST and a senior member of IEEE. She's actively involved in IEEE Women in Engineering events. She's a recipient of Uttama Acharya Puraskar. She has participated in delivered lectures at international level in IEEE Congress held in Bali, Indonesia, and Dhaka, Bangladesh. Dr. Lalita acted as the head of Energy Systems Research Group and as the head of Power Systems Research Group. She has published 50 
research papers and obtained patent on method of for online monitoring of voltage stability index in a power system. She has co-authored co a book on microgrid protection along with Dr. M. Ramamurthy. She's basically a BTEC in Tripoli from Sri Venkateshwara University College of Engineering, Tirupati, and a PhD holder from National Institute of Technology, Warangal. She's presently working as a professor of the Tripoli Department of KLEF Deemed University. She's a certified trainer of Power Sector Skills Council, NSDC India. With that introduction, I hand over the stage to Dr. Lalita, who will engage us for the next 45 minutes. We can have 15 minutes of Q&A after the talk. And she told me she doesn't mind being interrupted if there are questions in between her talk and she could even convert that into a discussion. So over to you, Dr. Lalita. Thank you, Dr. Anita. And uh, thank you, Dr. Akila, uh, for the introductory remarks. I'm, uh, before I start my presentation, I need to thank the IEEE Kerala section and the CSI and other professional societies, in specific, uh, uh, Dr. Harindra Ral, sir, whom I met during my Bali visit in uh, SYWL Congress. Uh, thank you very much, sir, for giving me this wonderful opportunity of sharing my thoughts. And uh, I hope all of you are doing well during this post-pandemic uh, situation. And uh, without any delay, uh, when uh, sir has asked me to deliver a lecture, I thought, uh, is it okay if I uh, take something uh, related to women and women engineering category uh, other than the technical? Uh, then said, sir said, okay, you can do it under the IEEE banner itself. Okay, then immediately uh, I was thinking about women empowerment, this gender diversity, discrimination, everything we keep uh, talking about. And it is the pandemic situation and the real uh, uh, life, what is that we have faced? Actually, I wanted to uh, know from the other participants as well and uh, have uh, uh, some kind of understanding how I could uh, face this pandemic situation, uh, looking after the house and, and also the uh, college work, administrative work and all. And uh, so what, what was the difficulty? What, what was different? why the life was different during the pandemic when everything has been locked down. Uh, it was a real like a lockdown for the women most of the time. So I thought I just wanted to uh, say uh, a few of my experiences and also would uh, wanted to share uh, my thoughts with all the distinguished uh, participants over here. And it would be, I, I welcome any, uh, any kind of inputs from any of the participants at any point of time during my lecture, because it is a more generic uh, uh, main topic and which uh, every one of us have gone through. And uh, most of the uh, men might have realized what is the importance of the household work. I uh, hear from my friends and uh, other colleagues, even in my, family members in the extended family that most of the men start uh, became uh, very good uh, cooks during this and uh, they have realized what is the difficulty related to the household work. So apart from that, uh, without much difficulty, I have just uh, prepared a few slides only for the sake of discussion. And uh, I, I would be more happy if uh, uh, people give me a, a more uh, chance to uh, for discussion. We'll have uh, more discussion uh, rather than just a presentation. So I think uh, I, I was just checking. So actually the title which was, uh, I have chosen or we have discussed is changing role of uh, working women. And then I prefer to change it as women. I'll tell you why it is so. So uh, after first immediately uh, when I was asked, I told it's okay, fine, it's working women. Then the I question has come into my mind. Uh, is it correct uh, to say uh, working women? Is it a correct definition of uh, what exactly I wanted to teach? Working women, what could be the definition? So uh, do, uh, uh, is it uh, related to the employed women who are working outside? And what would, then what would happen to the work, what they're doing inside the house? Are they not working? 
so so some kind of uh, thought process has come into my mind then i had i became skeptical about whether is it uh, really a correct phrase to use uh, a word as working women only for the people who are employed outside and doing the work so i leave it to the uh, audience also you can share your uh, maybe we have to coin a new phrase okay uh, so the because the title uh, we have chosen is ancient to modern how the role has been changing every one of us know that what is what has been happening to the women right from the ancient ages to the modern era so one thing which i could see from my uh, grandparents to myself and uh, in my uh, families so earlier uh, most of the times uh, the role of women was limited to a housewife uh, the so called housewife now at least uh, they are calling it as homemaker a beautiful name given to all the unpaid caring work what is being done so it's a transition from the housewife to the so called working women what uh, people uh, are calling so what was uh, working working uh, for the housewife is limited to within the house so uh, doing all the work inside the house related to the care work or the cleaning or cooking or washing or whatever and then coming to the working women so work they have to do inside and also outside a working women uh they, they they though even though we uh, distinguish be, uh, them as working women they work inside the house and also outside the house so the work burden on them is now doubled but uh, there are some uh, uh, main uh, advantages and also at the same time these advantages are coming with challenges i cannot say these are uh, limitations or uh, disadvantages there are many challenges the working women are facing so uh, the another uh, uh, thing uh, related to the people uh, when we say talk about the working women the people who are uh, working inside as homemaker as housewife their work is most of the times it is unpaid and unnoticed and for us people like us who go out and do uh, some job okay who are employed outside apart from working at home we get some salary okay so, so we can say ours is a paid job we, uh, for the work what we are doing outside but what we are doing inside it is most of the time it is unpaid even now so uh, now uh, a new uh, thought process has started earlier it was only uh, like uh, the homemaker versus the working women or uh, the Uh, backward or the forward or educated or uneducated or empowered or to be empowered people so now uh, a new uh, phrase has come and a new uh, there is a paradigm shift uh, because of the pandemic the pandemic has changed uh, the thought process of many people and uh, there were so many disparities uh, in the uh, work uh, life balancing of the women and also the men and this pandemic has completely shaken the lives of all the people in the, in the entire world and so uh, let us have some kind of uh, thinking or brainstorming about what uh, was before covid and after covid and it was during covid we, we cannot say it is still post covid but uh, I, we keep seeing that the second uh, phase has started for the covid already the cases are increasing so uh, it is we can say during covid and post covid and why uh, i am uh, uh, saying this is because for the entire people who are living now for this entire generation maybe this is the first time we were locked inside the houses maybe this is the first time uh, the online uh, uh, first time we have we can say discovered that we can do the teaching online because i am from academia so we were never thought of that we would be teaching from home so sitting at home and teaching the students and we could successfully i, I work for kl university and i also uh, would like to acknowledge uh, that the where lockdown even everyone uh, they were enjoying like holidays we were working harder 
at our university because we did not lose any academic year. So that uh, uh, we have not stopped our internal exams, we have not stopped our external exams. We have given the uh, results and uh, we have completed the academic year. Now the new academic year has started and right now our second uh, first semester exams are going on. So maybe uh, this is where uh, a new dimension of uh, teaching has been experienced in most of the say deemed to be universities and also in the other universities and the colleges and also at the school level. I see um, except at the government uh, schools and the primary uh, school level, the most of the modern, uh, I mean, private schools, they have started organizing the uh, classes through WhatsApp. I see uh, most of the students be engaged. How far it is reaching the students, that's uh, a secondary issue. So, so for the, what happened to the work, uh, you can say magnitude of the work for the women during the COVID period and after the COVID period. So uh, work before the COVID, what I can say is somewhat easier uh, compared, uh, when you compare, uh, because uh, we are trying to concentrate on the amount of workload, what the working women are taking. Earlier, uh, before COVID, I used to have a maid or two or three maids and a cook, and they used to come and they cook and uh, they do the house cleaning. And as and when uh, we don't feel like uh, cooking, if the cook doesn't come, then uh, we used to hire, we used to have Swiggy or Zomato order it and take it or uh, one day I can say no today no cooking we'll, we are all going outside we'll go to your hotel we'll enjoy and we'll do that so that kind of a flexibility was there so I could concentrate uh, on to my uh, college or, or my administrative works or other uh, professional society works or whatever so I, I used to derive the time by delegating some of my duties as a homemaker, as a mother, or as a wife, uh, some of the cleaning work and uh, washing work and cooking work to some other people. And that way they are being delegated to the most of the times just to the uh, working uh, uh, servant maids or to the dobies. Or when we are not able to, we are having some problem, we used to hire, uh, some, there is a possibility when you have a function, we can hire people and uh, we, we could get uh, the things done at home uh, with by hiring some of the people. But COVID has changed it all of a sudden. All of a sudden, uh, servant maids, uh, some, in most of the places, servant maids have stopped coming to homes and uh, in most of the apartments, people that have uh, people have not allowed anybody out from outside to enter into their homes, and even in our homes also we have not allowed because of the fear. Maybe they would be carriers because they will be working in two or three places. So then, what happened? The entire workload has gone onto the shoulders of the women most of the times. Majority of the time, the lion's share of the household work the care work, it is always taken care of by the women. And uh, the, all those works which were not a burden, I can say we were delegating those works to the uh, other people, that delegation of the work has been completely seized out during the uh, COVID period, even the post COVID period. Because of, uh, for so many reasons, because of the fear of the pandemic or because they may be carriers, or uh, for, for so many reasons, in majority the, of the houses, most of the women, they had to work a lot. More amount of the work burden on the women has increased a lot. That is, uh, so another thing is, all people are staying at home. Okay, this is a very good thing. But in my uh, life, may, if I, we were thinking like uh, most of the times for the working women, uh, all the people staying together after the children grow up, they go to the colleges, they go to uh, hostels, or they will be studying elsewhere, and we will all be uh, busy with our own routines, and we'll be staying at some other places, and we may not have common holidays uh, uh, with difficulty, we'll get some holiday trip, all that. But now, all of a sudden, everybody started staying at home, so it's, it's the good side of it. So we have, uh, most of the families 
are now full with all the people staying together. This is something, the positive side of the COVID, which has brought in, in our families. We are able to stay together, share things and cook together if possible, if the people are working. Otherwise, the cooking also has increased. And because there is no work, automatically the want for eating also increases. So most of the times, right from morning breakfast, what is the breakfast for today? What is the lunch for today? Evening snacks to dinner. So, so also the magnitude of the work goes on increasing. And for these people, otherwise what uh, earlier we used to have that, uh, suppose if I, I, I may, I may or you can say, today I'm very busy, I have to go out to the office early. So I'm skipping the uh, breakfast. You have it in your canteen or you, or you have it out. That facility, that flexibility is not there now. Even after the post-COVID also, we are not able to tell, okay, you take food from outside. So that there is some hindrance that is acting on us. So we have to cook, we have to do. So but even in that, uh, the where maybe in most of the majority of the cases where we could train, uh, we can get the things done by the, with the help of outside uh, uh, outsourcing or by hiring people, we have not trained our uh, family members to share our work equally in most of the cases, in most of the cases, right? maybe because uh, all are busy or maybe because our kids are studying or maybe because of so many reasons. But a, a time has come where we have to educate uh, all our fa uh, family members uh, in case if such a situation, because now that we have faced the situation, it, it is not that just after you cook, cleaning and everything everything has to be shared the responsibility of the house uh, completely should be shared that uh, aspect earlier somehow uh, maybe of the my generation i can say i'm uh, coming to 50 now so our generation we were thinking okay it is okay if we are not uh, if we are hiring people and getting the things done it is fine it, and uh, we used to teach our kids. I, I, I have a daughter and a son. I, 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 I thought it is okay if I uh, tell them, uh, if they know how to cook and uh, how to eat for them, that's it's fine. It's not just that. They should know how to maintain the house also. Cooking was not just that. That is what my experience is. Maybe, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, so they, they, they have to take equal share. Uh, most of the times we used to complain only about the cooking for the working women because the other services could be hired. But uh, so it's a situation may come where we will not be able to hire. So everything has to be taken care. Household work still where 70% is being done by the women that has to be delegated properly among all the people, irrespective of whether it is because of the COVID or for some other reason and uh, which is causing a lot of problem, health problems and mental stress, so many things which are happening that proper uh, work distribution has to happen. This is a lesson which I have learned after uh, this. So where are the rules for this kind of uh, thought process? Like it is okay, we have to keep them at their comfort levels. It is most of the times, it is the responsibility of the women. We can do, uh, like we can work outside and also we can work inside. We are superpowers, we are 200% efficient. Where are the rules? How did uh, this has crept into our minds? Why is it that we were not able to think? Okay, this could be the problem. Why we were not able to make a uniform work distribution inside the house because that is where the most what i believe is any change has to come within the self first first we have to realize as a person we have to change then at the family level we have to change then at the society then at the national level and in the ecosystem the change will come so any change or whenever we talk about uh, the uh, empowerment or the uh, about the women the women has to change first of all Women has to change at the self level and at the family level, at the societal level, and then uh, the, it, it comes as in the ecosystem. So there, there, there's nothing like uh, somebody else is not helping. The women, as women, we have to help ourselves. Okay, so uh, the solution, 
and who gives the solution we have to find the solution we have to get the solution for all the problems so uh, the roots were uh, right from the uh, beginning uh, from the vedic ages or uh, even even now if you find our textbooks it starts from the schooling itself uh in the and uh, right from in the way the way we brought up uh, our kids we 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 have a gender box we have a gender box and they we keep saying pink for girls and blue for boys they, they that that is where we start uh, giving some instructions to our mind and uh, we 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 keep a box for the girls girls are very caring they are very gentle they are responsible for all the domestic chores they speak and dress very modestly and the outside box is for the boys this is how actually uh, and when uh, girls uh, they outperform themselves act like a man this is what uh, we listen when we come to the c suite for at the chief executive level chief executive officer chief operating officer they like, think like a man this is what the slogan what we get uh, given is it uh, by birth uh, the people get such kind of uh, Uh, thought process, or we are inculcating these things into the minds uh, right from the beginning. This is a point which we need to. This, so, the, uh, so what? What could be the solution? Is we have to. If this, everybody knows. Say no to stereotypes. Okay, like uh, giving uh, toys, uh, different types of toys, and all this stuff. You might have seen. I, I just uh, kept this only to make you think. so how do we, uh, we, we, we how do we uh, bring about a change in the mindset of the women right from the childhood how do we can bring about a change in the women and uh, another uh, thing is uh, we know that we are empowered most of the time so whoever are attending this webinar there are i feel that they are empowered because we are educated we are being able to connect to a webinar we are able to deliver a webinar or we are conducting webinars so most of the times what happens is when we talk about the position of the women we think about ourselves if something is happening at our neighborhood are we taking a stand over there okay if uh, if are we giving our lending a helping hand to the needy people at all the times at all the places so it's not just for women for men also most of the men i really respect the men uh, because they give there there is so many men who give uh, a helping hand to the women to come up okay but uh, if something is happening unless uh, 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 unless somebody tells we uh, there is a need we are not self driven most of us because it is not in our genes we were not uh, brought up that way we our thought process is not developed in that way so at least for the next generations we have to tell that still there is a need it's not we let us not look for the any help from men but we have to change by ourselves and we have to help ourselves and we need to help others that is what uh, i thought so if there is somebody if people know that there is somebody who is going to say uh, safeguard if something is happening definitely things would set right if there are problem so there this there are so many guidelines for the, this is this as i told you it has to start uh, right at the school level so there are so many guidelines at the school level to inculcate this habit of uh, gender uh, uh, based uh, disparity should not be there but what is happening to all those everything we say uh, even in the very sophisticated environment also all these guidelines or whatever we are giving what is happening to all this is uh, i i request everyone to just uh, watch this slide for a while Uh, while you are watching, I can I'll I'll try to tell you why is it that I'm talking about this uh, gender uh, concept is that these disparities or uh, the women empowerment issues have been there right from ages, and we have been we have uh, definitely have come a very uh, to a very good level. where we are able to support ourselves we are supporting our families we are ruling the countries 
we have gone to the uh, i mean uh, astronauts are there everyone is there but still but still there is a, a glass ceiling or you say that, but still wholeheartedly we cannot say that we are empowered we need to take most of the women they have to take the permission to say so that they are empowered okay so this pandemic there is a worry that this pandemic has de has deepening the uh, barriers uh, still instead of uh, there is a barrier and we are trying to build up over that barrier and because of the pandemic these situations are getting this may get uh, worse okay so that is why i have brought in the concept of the gender just for the thought process to start so the why i have uh, kept this slide is i like this slide a lot uh, this is uh, what i feel is uh, this is uh, here you have a man and he is thinking that he is watering the plants the plants are here, the, the plants are here and there's some person who is sleeping in the clouds he think is his thought process is that he is thinking the thinking that he is watering the plants so this is where is our women empowerment our women equality are uh, giving help and support to the women even though this person is actually trying to help water the plants but is the water reaching the needy this is where is lacking so we have to take the initiative these plants if we think that uh, in the women we need to uh, ensure that so if we cannot uh, doubt the um, what we can say the intention of this person trying to water the plants somehow there is a gap between this water falling on the ground and not reaching the needy plants so if we can bridge this gap everything would be fine women will be uh, there won't be I, i don't think then that we will not be talking much already uh, uh, you can some some in some sectors in our college we have a women's forum okay uh, i also work as a convener of the women's forum and we celebrate uh, the international women's day and i keep getting the questions when is the men's day madam so on a lighter note we keep telling that every day is your only we are celebrating only one day why do you worry okay recently i have seen there is an international men's day also uh, i don't know how many, how many of you have uh, seen recently very recently uh, through this whatsapp i have got some uh, messages that today is international men's day okay so uh, if we uh, there are well built uh, methodologies processes and policies kept in place but the implementation of it is somehow not reaching the needy people so we need to uh, take the lead in making these policies to be implemented so that it reaches the needy in the correct time and these these issues were there the women issues were there from long back but this pandemic has still worsened the situation so how is it that we have to uh, get about with this so you have to be the game changer that's what i feel as a women we have to be the game changer why should we uh, wait for somebody else to come and do something for us we have to be the game changer we as a working women i have to change my mindset yes okay i have been managing like this so why why you i we need to explore what are the possibilities how i can take care of everything yes i i believe that as yes, i can take care of everything so how do i delegate the works how do i delegate the works and make people understand that it is uh, uh, it is a process of life that's it so anything you create peace in your lives together instead of accusing most of the times uh, maybe in the house or at the workplace okay we all are employees all of us are employees or maybe employees there should be a uh, peace between uh, the people living in the house or working in a organization between the employee and the employer between the employees so they have to create Uh, a peaceful atmosphere together and promises whatever they are making they need to keep up their promises and they have to be uh, they should give the respect for each other 
maybe it is not uh, uh, only for the family members it is not only for uh, men or women any it applies to everyone any two people uh, they we always have to explore how do we explore the peace because uh, ultimately we need to have the peace of mind not the peace uh, our honorable vice chancellor always keeps says at the end you require only the peace of mind not the pieces of mind okay so we we would like to have uh, i have a question uh, sir uh, shall we uh, i think uh, according to the organizers maybe uh, questions at the end or shall we go a raised hand i am seeing yeah madam yes yes uh, if you are ready to take uh, sri kumaran sir uh, if you can and mute yourself and please yeah, raise your question wants to say something right fine shri kumaran sir shri kumaran sir would you like to ask anything because you have raised your hand or i uh, actually there are two queries in the um, not to more than that in the chat also if you would like to take that now ma'am Yeah, I'll take it later because uh, no, they are not. Uh, they are happy with the chat box. Okay. 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 Sri Kumaran, uh, sir, would you like to take the question now, or shall ma'am proceed? I think you can proceed, ma'am, because yeah, you fine. Proceed. So, uh, so after uh, taking over this uh, topic, then I made a lot of literature survey. Okay, so I thought uh, all will be learned people, and uh, how do I? Uh, prop in a proper way express myself so what are the things that are a lot of literature is available and I, especially i have looked at uh, the policies which are made by the un united nations and the international labor organizations even though there are so many other uh, things uh, like uh, world economic forum and mckinsey all are there only two i am presenting for want of time so this is the uh, policy brief which was uh, published on 9th april uh, 2020 on the impact of covid-19 on women how it has changed it has touched upon so many things it is by the united nations and uh, one important observation what uh, is given is because of the uh, pandemic the gender based violence has increased a lot the gender based violence has increased a lot because most of the people are staying at home this is something of concern gender based violence is increasing exponentially many women are being forced to lock down okay so we need to think how do we do that we cannot say that there is no violence i don't agree with that and most of the people maybe uh, for the outside world people say no we are all uh, empowered okay it's not and another thing is economic impulse most of the jobs because of the pandemic has been uh, dropped off and most of the times it is the women working women who, who are working at the lower income their jobs are been shedded so uh, they are uh, having less earning so economic impacts and health is another concern generally uh, the care work at home is taken care of by the women because of the pandemic uh, this care work has increased a lot that also this unpaid care work what you can see the another uh, point which is raised unpaid care work has increased so how do we uh, uh, go about with this okay so uh, there there are uh, three uh, priorities uh, that what uh, un policy has given that is ensure women's equal representation in all covid-19 response planning and decision making i think every one of you know uh, that every organization is now thinking on because uh, the government has opened up uh, i mean the uh, colleges and offices have been opened up in every office and every institution uh, every organization and in every industry now there is a specific committee that is looking after how to take care of uh, maintain the social distancing and ensuring uh, the prevention of covid-19 pandemic etc 
so in all this while the decision making anything which is happening most of the times the decision makers uh though we say that uh, women are there but the decision making the representation of the women is very less so one uh, of the uh, policy recommendations is that women should be there should be equal representation in this uh, planning process and uh, another one is uh driving transformative changes for the paid as well as the unpaid work whatever paid and unpaid work women are doing that uh, oh okay i have not shared uh, un policy are you not able to see i have shared the un policy yeah it is there uh, but it's just not in the uh, slide uh, view mode yeah 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 is. how do i share this maybe i have to stop sharing this and again share that no it is there even policy okay right madam is it visible now yes yes yeah yes. this is the policy brief this is what i have been talking about so i i suggest that the members may go through this uh they are, they have they've given what are the economic impacts so many uh things that are happening health impacts okay uh, one of the interesting uh, recommendation is put cash in women's hands okay so that is one of the recommendations and uh, extend basic social protection to informal workers and these are the unpaid care work is something of bigger concern unpaid care work how we can uh, address this unpaid care work so there is a big policy which is given by the un i uh, suggest that uh, the honorable members uh, the members may please uh, think how uh we can uh, address this unpaid care work so so many recommendations are there by the un to take care of this but how far as i shown you the um, slide is the water reaching the plants that is of a bigger concern then so this is the un policy and uh, another uh, uh, thing which uh, uh, actually has struck my uh, thought process while i was uh, checking there is a beautiful uh, powerpoint presentation which is available in the net okay this is about the changing mindset of the people i just thought uh, like it, it it is not relevant to the agenda of this thing but uh, mindset is of the people is changing like how earlier uh, in Uh, when i am a child uh, i used to play outside and my mom used to scold me how long you play outside now we are asking to uh, kids to go out and play so it, this applies to any every every field and uh, in this uh, actually i wanted to show you one interesting though it's uh, not mine it is about uh, uh, the uh during the elections uh, in the german during the hitler uh period the nazis how uh, they tried to uh, influence like how peaceful the life would be for women if they elect their party but though they though this uh, ppt is about the uh, people of uh, uh, nazis but i feel it is equally applicable for any woman with in the uh, world so this in german language kinder check uh, means what it means is the life of a woman is dedicated for children church and kitchen so this was used okay 
and then uh, all of us uh, if uh, most of the times the girls or women our only aim was to take care of the family and th th this is a lesson from one of the german professor okay and this is uh, yeah you can see here hitler said that man's world is the state and world of women is a smaller world and for her the world is her husband family and children and her house this was the definition uh, a, which is given it is of course true in for most of our grandmothers mothers the, our most of the grand uh, great grandmothers and all even for us it is but we are having two dual responsibilities so are the global uh, statement this is something which i keep hearing uh most of the times whenever we uh, talk about the women empowerment we keep telling uh, uh that manusmriti in uh, puranas uh, from in indian culture and gobel statements the mission of women is to be beautiful and to bring children into the world this is not at all as unmodern isn't it it was uh, then even now we see the same but the only thing is the it has been colored people say we are empowered why you want to uh, uh, struggle yourself you stay at home why do you want to go for work you stay at home we will take care of you all these things but even now there is uh, there is a uh, yeah here i would like to uh, uh, say another point the working women most of the times as i said uh, there should be a change from the society here earlier um, compared to the present generation the previous generation if a woman starts working she is to be questioned a lot ah see ma this by uh, yeah, this uh, lady is going out to earn money as if the money what is her husband is earning is not enough she is going out she is not taking care of the family she is not taking care of the kids she is not taking care of her in laws and she is just moving out and uh, like a man going out and not taking care of the responsibility is it true uh, you see how much of mental pain it is true even in today's uh, families also wherever there are working women are there and especially in this pandemic situation in this pandemic situation where the colleges have opened and uh, or the offices have opened and most of the people are thinking that women are the first persons who are being asked to quit their jobs for the care work is it not true uh, to take care of the people to take take care of the uh, works at home most of the women they are taking care uh, when losing their uh, quitting their jobs voluntarily okay here uh, i just wanted to show you this one yeah there is a, this one this is a, yeah this is a, 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 a this is a promotion a, a picture like thing so this is a party the national socialist german workers party and it says that it safeguards the entire community and for that it uh, it says that the party will ensure togetherness of all the people which is in the community and you can see the eagle the eagle is uh, you can see it spread its uh, wings as if it is safeguarding the entire uh, family okay so uh, the family is being protected the eagle generally we uh, show it for very powerful and see the father is known as the head of the family and he raises above the family with the shirt sleeves rolled up uh, showing that uh, he works outside and uh, takes care of the family earns for the family and you see the mother uh, sh being shown very gently and uh, uh, with her uh, scarf okay all the domestic chores she is supposed to take care of and the children here also you see the boy near the father mother 
uh, girl near the mother and uh, mother is shown to be very happy and healthy and this is how the work culture has been even now it is uh, the same i think it is applicable in most of the countries in most of the families most of the countries and most of the families this uh, uh, i mean idea of women uh, are uh, the not the main breadwinner women are not the main breadwinner okay so uh, why uh, the women has to work it is only as a time pass for most of them they are doing so not much of a uh, you mean uh, respect is given for the work what women are doing inside and outside the house like as i said there are ilo guidelines also released because of the post uh, covid 19 and uh, i am not able to share directly the uh, uh, ilo guidelines and uh, the sharing option i am not getting uh, directly maybe i have to share directly i am not directly yeah i am not able to switch across the windows mm -hmm. screens i am not able to yes. mm -hmm. i am not getting okay 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 uh, these ilo guidelines i think uh, maybe uh, the right time is running out the ilo also has issued uh, many guidelines Uh, to create a uh, happy uh, working environment family friendly working environment for the working people this is the point which i wanted to highlight and uh, on the lighter side uh, I, i i request all the people to just go through these uh, images which i am showing this is of course uh, not uh, related to the ilo guidelines but this is some point which is really very painful i feel every time whenever i see the whatsapp messages most of the times way which keep pouring down as funny messages the two ladies are uh, they are chit chatting and uh, see uh, trying to showcase that the ladies do not have any other work except uh, chit chatting and you see uh, about the funny jokes as if they record everything this is something uh, which i i would like to request all the members uh, who are uh, present in this uh, webinar to please uh, not encourage any kind of jokes in the uh, name of uh, fun any cartoon or anything which gives a wrong impression about the role of a women the women working women especially they are playing dual role or they are doing excellent they need your support and do not crack jokes on them in the name of fun it really hurts it really hurts and this is something really uh, this is a they say a more realistic wedding card as if wedding is like a well and the person is jumping plunging into it if it is ready to plunging into it starting with a negative thought giving a thought process our entire uh, society is with a thought process that women are like uh, in telugu we call them as gayali uh, i do not know like what in kerala what do they say uh, like uh, they 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 squeeze out the money or uh, they, they are the people who give lot of uh, some people say wife means worry is invited forever some such stupid uh, jokes people keep uh, saying in the name of fun which is not correct because the the people do not know people do not know what exactly is the truth so the young minds they get carried away by all those uh, materials i request and for women this is something which uh, i it's in my local language but uh, this is something which i keep uh, telling everyone for the women why not we use 
a solution like this. Isn't it a very smart solution? Okay, we are, he, this person is not able to take this uh, guy forward. Okay, so he's trying to give some uh, grass inside so that it can move. And you see, even while you are dying, there is a solution to catch hold of its neck. So for women, there is a lot of scope. We, we should not look at anybody. We try to be respectful. We give respect to uh, the men and men will automatically give us respect. And uh, I'm not saying, I, I'm very much against this uh, people saying that uh, uh, men are uh, causing some problems to the women. We have to, if you are giving a chance for somebody to uh, say exploit you, it is your uh, mistake. That's what I feel. And another uh, thing during this pandemic situation, what most of the women, even in my uh, college, uh, recently I have uh, 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 taken over as the convener. Earlier I was the head of the department of triple department where our, uh, even now as a convener also, most of the uh, faculty, female faculty, they come to uh, me or uh, they keep telling uh, because of the pandemic, we are not able to uh, when, uh, take care of the work. How you are managing? How is that? I need leave for this or leave the, for that. Let us let us not mix the family life and the work life. The pandemic has definitely given a challenge. I, I, I see it as a challenge for the women. It is a challenge. The major problem what the women, what I feel, and uh, one of the um, uh, webinars which I have attended, one of the speakers has given an excellent solution, which I really liked very much, which uh, if practiced will be a good solution. Uh, we, we, more, for most of us, work from home option has been given. When work from home option has been given, what majority of the women they are doing is they are clubbing the household work with the uh, office work. This is what is causing a big challenge. Normally, we uh, go to the office maybe around 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock and stay in the office up to 5 o'clock. And we used to take care of the work up to 9 or after 5, the household work. In between is the office work. Yes, of course, it is a challenge with uh, no maid coming or no cook there, no uh, uh, these people are there, everyone is there, they expect you to do something, but still, but still, we need to play, create a place for ourselves. The working women, they have to create a place for themselves. And they create an office environment inside the house and start working. And say, you, you have to be bold enough to say that I am busy with my office work. When you are a working woman, no one is going to tell you that you are not doing the both works at the simultaneously. We have a mental block that we want to prove that we are superpowers we can handle both of them equally at the same time this is where the stress is coming maybe this is not true in all cases there is definitely exploitation but all the intelligent people who are uh, here definitely will understand where we need to how we can manage we need to be good managers of our time so how does that comes in my uh, view is we have to be respectful and uh, everyone we have to be respectful towards uh, every human being because it is only the humans who can understand what uh, matters and what doesn't matter and we need to uh, listen to all the people whoever are trying to give us a solution and take uh, Tell them that you care for them, but at this point of time, you are not at their dispense. Because of your other obligations or because of the time, you are not able to spend time with them. So show that you care, but you have your own limitations and give, give some promise and maybe at the house level or some other level and keep up those promises so that you will develop the trust. Then you will get the respect. And this is something which I practiced myself. Rediscover yourself. Uh, uh, this is what from my end. 
if you think your position is okay then it is time to question yourself this works every time even in the post pandemic situation also then you is this your comfort zone think okay then if you think that this is your comfort zone then definitely there is a scope that you can go to the next level take a leap and come out of your comfort zone you cannot achieve anything with your comfort zone and do what is best for you no matter what people other people say no matter what people say yes you are happy you are earning you are doing everything okay you are doing good if you take care of the house it is enough you don't have you don't need any promotions you don't have to go out if everything is good your family is good uh, everything don't listen to all that you are the better judge you have a profession of yours and do what is better for yourself okay every step of change is a step better for your empowerment women empowerment okay this is what i feel so what is needed is as i told you earlier also at personal level we have to attain more managerial skills understand other players and how to get the results okay this applies even for the family also and at the family level more support and work sharing is required for the women from their counterparts and for the family members and at the society level we need to create gender awareness and eliminate this gender biases and at employer level they need to create a conducive environment by providing child care adequate toilets and other facilities and at the national level we need to provide a safer and more secure environment so a nation's progress and prosperity can be judged by the way it treats its women folk this uh, no one can deny that and this is the form, famous quote of swami vivekananda with that i would like to conclude my session i think i have crossed my time it is impossible to think about the welfare of the world unless the condition of women is improved thank you thank you very much now i think uh, we can go for this if time permits that's from my end thank you ma'am for the great empowering words Thank i'm you. so happy so happy to hear you and i'm sure uh, all uh, irrespective of the gender men and women who are here participants will say that she did great justice to the topic and then yes made us all feel yes it is the ladies it is in the ladies hands to yeah. say <laughs> whether we should go forward or not But true very yes. true i am also with that with you ma'am yes because we just can't complain to others that others are not letting us if we are not ready to step out of that uh, bounds with which we have uh, created artificially then yeah. the, no use telling others saying that you have blocked me true yeah, very true yeah. ma'am <laughs> yes 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 uh, now uh, would anybody like to raise their hands and ask the questions uh, of course there are questions in the chat box but first i thought let me just because i thought you preferred that If yeah, any of the participants would like to raise their hands and ask the questions directly, please feel free. Okay. When as nobody has raised their hands, I'll just read one or two questions. It is there in the yes. chat box. Yeah. Mr. Narayan Nair, Ravindranath has said. what about part time hired domestic work, women workers during covid yeah. period they are not hired by family due to fear of spreading the pandemic what about their status now and they'll find it difficult to earn a livelihood yeah, and now yeah, since this... one more question is as for the relate to that to him itself now since hired domestic workers are not preferred all members of family members share the work at home also he has put it <laughs> yes of course uh, yeah it is very true sir uh, uh, ravindranath noyer uh, 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 yeah even i faced the situation but uh, i think uh, most of the times i have allowed them one or two members and for those during the pandemic situation of course we paid them though we have not asked them to come we did pay because we were getting salaries so that's how i have done and uh, uh, that's what i heard most of my colleagues have done maybe uh, the people who have lost their jobs they could not do it and uh, another uh, avenue where they have got this is uh, in the frontline workers most of the frontline workers uh, near the hospitals etc they have got the work 
so i did not hear at least in my sphere there were uh, uh, say for example i have my dobi she lost some three to four uh, uh, houses she washes clothes in three four houses and uh, because of the pandemic they did not allow her to go and then uh, she started uh, working uh, for uh, the people where she is going additional work like she is coming to me uh, she is helping me in other aspects like my cook is not coming she voluntarily she stopped so there was nothing so another uh, the, the uh, we are fortunate here uh, in most of the governments they have given them uh, free rice and uh, some uh, i mean uh, the support and some money also has been distributed by the government so that is how i think they have survived and this is somewhere the humanity has to come into action that's what i i, I feel and that that is the place where uh, where the domestic violence also has increased in the class 4 uh, people i hope uh, i have answered the question most of the questions would be unanswered they they'll be always open for discussion yeah ma'am yes yeah. Uh, what you said was also there is no now, true uh, true or false in that <laughs> okay yeah now anita naya ma'am has said i also think that the mindset of men about gender parity has to change from inside out by talking about gender issues we are definitely driving in the points to create awareness however it would take time for new ideas to sink in what do men in this forum think about this point as what she has put it and uh, <laughs> but then i think yes it's for all of us to have that uh, mindset uh, correction because it's not only men i think even the women should not say that i am bound i am bound to do this so i don't want to ask it will be a favor asking them of course it's yes. not a favor if we have thought that it's a favor that we are asking them to help then then it will be that mindset will never come out and it will yes. always be seen as a favor rather than yes. uh, uh, joining hands and then doing it for the family i believe that this is yeah. exactly and uh, <laughs> i'd like to you know uh, add a little bit of a point there because as a, i work at ey and uh, we have this diversity and inclusion um, uh, you know forums uh, there and i was leading a group called the allies group where our objective was to you know get more men to participate in uh, gender issues within ey so there are so many people who have senior roles in ey which who are men and very few women in the sen- very senior roles so um uh, we are, we were trying to get uh, you know support from men not not to uh, cover the uh, senior positions or anything but to uh, spread the message uh, that gender parity is not about uh, you know um, uh, women needing help from men but it's a collaborative thing where you know both the genders have uh, have uh, different aspects of personality to share and when you come together in a meeting and respect each other's points of view uh, it makes a whole lot of difference and there's a lot to learn from each other so driving that point in um, uh, what's what's a little about, uh, what do you mean by gender parity that's where you know men do not have that clear Mm, um you know thought processes to what women are wanting out of that so um that's something that i felt that you know uh, more awareness has to be created in that that aspect yes yes very true recently my son was telling when uh, when i i, I got frustrated i was shouting then she was he was telling ma why you take up all these things you simply do whatever is needed for you we will take care of the things why you do all the work and then shout better not do the things and don't shout that's a very good enlightenment for me but uh, this is something which we do most of us we do that mistake we think that we can do everything we are overpowered like it's not we have our own limitations time is same for us okay so it's only okay, right. uh, the way we look at it <laughs> dr enan panikar has summarized it as synergetic self management can it summarize yeah. your message or so on there i think yes. it's it it rings a bell correctly i believe yes yes yes, yes. <laughs> i just i don't know why nobody has raised that point just i was thinking well my children are all little grown up but 
there are people who have small kids at home and i think it's the working women who have shared their laptops and their time for teaching the kids and not the <laughs> parents <laughs> what do you say of about course. that <laughs> yeah 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 most of the times i see they, whenever you have to leave the job it is always the women i keep telling i am an electrical engineering basically uh, so we teach one concept what is called transformers in transformers uh, all of you know uh, you might have seen a transformer which converts the high voltage into low voltage in that uh, there would be a three winding transformer so i keep telling my uh, if, uh, girl students so before uh, your marriage you know uh, you are like a primary winding it will have three windings a primary winding secondary winding and a tertiary winding so tertiary winding is very rarely used whenever it is uh, required primary winding is the prime concern and if you have supply in the primary winding you will have a supply in the secondary winding so before the marriage your job your career is like your primary winding after marriage don't make it as a secondary winding and after you get give birth to a kid it it you don't make it as tertiary you always define what is your role and don't be a three winding transformer yes of course and i see most of the times uh, students keep coming and uh, most of the uh, failures in the marriages especially in the recent uh, era because uh, the girls they are competing along with the uh, boys and they are getting good jobs especially in the software industry uh, marriage is not being an obstacle for them and nowadays uh, the boys are uh, preferring working girls and uh, there is a tendency that after job uh, the guys are uh, relaxing by letting the wives work they are taking uh, some rest also this is what i heard from my students so but after the they give they become the parents then comes the choice because both of them will be at their uh, main age where they want to go from the first level management to the senior level management so this is where uh, the clash will come of course as a mother uh, they cannot say that uh, i will go to the work leaving the kid but how long how long is it 3 uh, months or 6 months or 1 year or forever or for 5 years so when the when even a child has to be made it is always what is happening is the girls at that point of time maybe out of love or uh, out of the newborn baby all those things they are saying that okay i'll take a break but what is happening is when they join back after some time definitely they are finding it uh, that there are so many clashes because they have sacrificed they feel they have sacrificed they have sacrificed their career for want of the family and for bringing up the kids and they have given the opportunity voluntarily to uh, their husbands and 5 uh, to 10 years down the lane they start uh, uh, criticizing see i have done so much then and you are not caring men or men like that who asked you to forego your uh, sacrifices you need to educate it is not like that you are uh, uh, you you sacrifice everything for him if there is a, a gap uh in the career let both of you share it equally when you both are equally earning when you are doing that's what i i tell my uh uh students why did you let your husband okay you take up go on the ladder you could have asked him i i am taking six months leave or i am taking one month leave you take one month leave because after six months or one year both of them they can take care of the kid this is Uh, somewhere even the mindset of the people has to change at the family level also most of the times it is only the girls who are leaving the careers why can't uh, when the girls are doing all that the nowadays people are giving paternity leave also why not uh, the uh, men also take a break of one month or two months when uh, the money earned by the girl is equally uh, on par with you why invite troubles at a later stage this is my thought process maybe i'm wrong you can correct me i think might yeah. be true uh, yeah. so it's but oh, i think we should not have that i sacrifice this sacrifice yeah. comes in then comes a problem 
yeah, it should be right. like it's a joint decision and there should be no regrets going forward yes. if that yes. is the case then the family will the equilibrium or the yeah. stability will be maintained i believe there's no sacrifice that word comes in then gone i yes. think that is what the uh, <laughs> defining factor is it yeah. is together a decision is made and then there is no regrets for that I mean, yes, as I am a person who have, I am also triple E, ma'am. So I was so happy to see this. <laughs> and the first batch yeah. from CET for triple E because earlier okay. it was electrical, okay. and then yeah, a career was there in between. I have left in between, it, taken breaks. Yes, I have joined yeah. back. Now I have taken a, a sort of a two years break. Yeah. Uh, I, but I'm doing volunteering job and keeping myself engaged with PMI Kerala chapter. So I mean, yes. it depends how our passion is and how cushion we have from the family. Yes. All those things matter yes. as well. It of course we cannot have one uh, statement, Same. a blanket yeah. statement across all families. It's all true. I believe all will uh, agree that Ma'am was yes. uh, great in delivering this uh, topic uh, and helping us see the relevance of the changes that has happened in this uh, pandemic session uh, season for even the women as well especially now i'll invite uh, mr korotu pivagis to deliver the vote of thanks sir yeah good evening to all so it was a really interesting talk. I hope everybody... Is it audible? Okay. can hear you, but little feeble. Little feeble. Okay, okay. The thing is there. Okay. I consider it was an honor for me, for inviting me to give the vote of thanks for this session. As time has already closed uh, 7.15, I will not be taking much time for this one. I'll be winding up fast. The challenges women faces are complex and interrelated. And Professor Lalitha has nicely presented the challenges faced by women because during this COVID period also. There was a good interactive discussions among the participants that itself shows the importance and the interest from the participants. Dear ma'am, we are extremely thankful to you for highlighting the points in changing the role of um, working women during this third period. On behalf of the organizers and on behalf of the, all the sister professional organizations and personally on my behalf, I extend you a sincere word of thanks. Thank you, ma'am. And I hope everyone also enjoyed this one. Everybody, I hope everybody will agree with me that it is not an easy job to organize series of technical talks continuously without any break. And even with very eminent expert speak, uh, speakers from a variety of field. And a special thanks to all the organizers and the technical team for organizing it in an exemplary manner. So I extend my sincere thanks to all of them. And that too, without the participation of the participants, if the number of participants are not, uh, not there, our work is an effort. So we are seeing a constantly a good number of participants attending this one. And we am extremely thankful to all the participants and extending my thanks to all the members on behalf of the society and personally on my behalf. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Ma'am, can we leave? Thank you, sir. And uh, dear participants, before you leave, yes, please join us next Wednesday, uh, the same uh, the session for the 36th session. It's a panel discussion, the topic being 2021, a more cyber secure year. So please join in next Wednesday at 6 p.m. for the next session. That's a panel discussion session. And thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.